hello everybody. Hi. Welcome to Friday evening. We have no idea what day of the week it even is, apparently. <laughs> even though, even though for what nearly three months yeah. now we've been teaching this every single Wednesday at 4 30. Welcome to Wednesday afternoon. Welcome to Wednesday afternoon. Can I have some thumbs up if everybody can hear us okay? I can hear you us okay. You can well you can hear yourself okay. <laughs> right. Shall we turn the oven off, please? Let's see if we can get that. Thanks for your patience, guys. We had um, a slight technical issue with our um audio um and we had a couple of last minute phone calls um with people trying to get in somebody hadn't registered and was um struggling but hopefully they're all here and then i think there's a couple more that we are um waiting for so thank you so much for your patience everybody um now those of you who've been with us before know that we love to see your faces, but please don't feel like you need to put your video on if you don't want to, that's totally fine. We record these um, for safeguarding purposes and also so that we can make you all famous at some point. You might hear your voices, but you won't ever see your pictures um, getting published anywhere unless you or your mummy or daddy um, or rather I should say you and your mummy and daddy say that it's okay for me to do that, um, which they will have done by, by registering to, to be here. But if anyone's got any questions about that, um, do just let me know. Um, so we are just waiting for a couple more people. This class, in contrast to last week's class, is super simple, super easy. Did we have a question? It's literally six. No, we're just saying hi. <laughs> oh, hello, hello. By the way, Mommy, Very nice. We're joining, we're actually joining from Dubai. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. It's 8 p.m. Oh, wow. And you are going to need ice cream. I, I had a yes. over there. <laughs> Oh, that's so exciting. Don't we got someone from Dubai on? So have we got any other crazy places? Anyone else want to jump in and tell me where you are? We're in Kensal Rise in London. Woo! <laughs> we, we usually live in Putney. Oh, amazing. How funny. Yeah. And now you're on the other side of the world. I hope you're happy and safe in Dubai. My cousin lives in Dubai as well, so we're very fond of that. Um, we will say I know we've got someone on the call from. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, Sheffy. Oh, Yeah, we'll we'll tell more about that in a minute. Okay. Can we switch it off now? Um, can you put the heat on underneath it if you like? So one of the things that you guys could do is get your bain marie ready. Unless you don't have one unless you don't have one, in which case hopefully you've got a microwave and a glass bowl that you can microwave melt your chocolate in. So we're not going to do it in immediately, don't worry, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. So anybody who has um, played with us before knows that um, in the chat, please go ahead and put in some questions and I'll try and spot them as they go um, and answer them. But if you can't um, kind of get my attention through the chat, then press your space bar if you've got a computer or just temporarily unmute yourself and holler out a question. That's, we love hearing from you. Um, and then make sure that you put yourself on mute again so that we don't hear everybody's um, kitchen clatter. Um, and then the other thing that I was going to say um, has completely left my head because I'm 45 and I don't know what I'm doing anymore and I have no idea what day of the week it is even. Oh yes, I was going to say that there are lots of people on this call from amazing places. We've got somebody who um, couldn't come at the last minute today but she has been at every single class and she's been calling in from Bermuda. We also have somebody who's been on the last few classes who is from New York. So we're getting all over town, um, which is just lovely. All right. All over the world, not all over town. All over town and all over the world, because I also happen to know that there's someone in Wandsworth. Um, so today, what are we making, Doc? We're making ice cream. We are making ice cream. We're making a really special 
ice cream, everybody. We're making an ice cream that, that's Stanley, he's helping making ice cream. We're making an ice cream that I learned how to do when I was about Dot's age, actually, I haven't told you this story. It was taught to me by somebody who I absolutely adore, who isn't around anymore, her name was Caro Havers, and she taught me how to make this, and I think she made it up out of desperation, um, and she taught me when we were in Spain, I used to go over and stay with her for holidays, and she taught me how to make this because she didn't have an ice cream machine, and um, they lived a little bit off the beaten track, and it was a pain in the butt to go down to um, the local town to get ice cream. And also the ice cream in Spain in those days was a long time ago. It was very sweet. Um, and although this is quite sweet, you can balance it. So you can even add a pinch of salt, um, which we might do later. Um, but it's super, super simple to do, and you can make it your own. So this is just a base recipe that you can then play with, and we'll show you that in a bit. So the first thing we want to do is tell you the ingredients. Exactly. Hit it. So, first, there's 200 ml of fresh double heavy cream. Double or heavy cream. So if you're in the US, we'll, we refer to it as heavy cream. If you're here, you refer to it as double cream. 300 ml of condensed milk. And the reason why I've said that, everybody, is that depending on where in the world you are, Condensed milk comes in slightly different variations of can. And in the US, you get quite big cans and you can go ahead and just use half of it. Um, or you can use just less than a full can that you get in the UK. This is um, Nestle, which is the kind of classic wartime condensed milk carnation that we all know and um, love or hate, depending on how you feel about it. And this is in fact 397 mils. Um, of or rather grams of um, carnation milk, which equates to 300 mils of um, carnation milk. So you can pretty much put all of it in. Um, and if there's a little bit stuck to the sides, don't worry. Um, you can drizzle it on a banana later or um, eat, lick the spoon if it's really, really naughty. But so the first thing, have we gone through all of the ingredients that they're going to need? No. So we've got heavy cream, condensed milk, 200 grams of bitter chocolate. That's that one. And that's quite key. You want to make sure that you've got bitter chocolate because the condensed milk is quite sweet. And if you don't have a super sweet tooth, you'll find that this ice cream is too sweet. Um, it's very much an ice cream made of childhood memories. So um, don't, don't worry too much if it is. Um, a, a little bit sweeter than you might expect. You can doctor it, as I said later. But this is 70%. In fact, this is 72%, isn't it? So 70, 72, 75% works great. And then what else are they going to need, Doc? You will need... The last ingredient is... 50 mils of full-fat milk. Exactly. So I have just turned on my stove behind me in order to warm up the water in my bain-marie. Now, if you have a bain-marie, I've got a particularly fancy one um, that I can show you. Should we show them? So it's a saucepan like this, and then it's got this beautiful ceramic insert that sits inside it. And you want to make sure that the bottom of your bowl, so most of you I'm sure are just using a small saucepan and a glass bowl, you want to make sure that the bowl isn't touching the water. So you only want the steam to come near the bowl, to have contact with the bowl. You don't want the water to have contact with the bowl because it means that you have slightly less control um, over using it and, the, and control over the temperature. But what we're going to do is get our water to get to a sort of simmer. So I've popped that over there on the heat. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah, good. Um, and then when it's... Absolutely, go ahead and put the chocolate in, in the pot or the bowl, depending upon what you've got. So that's 200 grams of bitter chocolate. If you've got a bar, 
um, of bitter chocolate, that's absolutely fine, but chop it up a bit so that it's going to be quicker to melt and it'll melt more evenly and, and sooner than if you've got great big um, lumps of it. Now I've got... Do we have to wait for the water to boil or can we just put it on now? We have to wait for the water to boil. Now you can put it on if you're, if you're ready to go and your chocolate's in your bowl, you can get it on. Um, and you're going to want a wooden spoon or a silicon spatula and just very gently give it a stir every now and then until it's nice and smooth. Where did I put silicon spatula? Oh, I don't know. You did go under the dishwasher. Where did it go? In here. I know. Oh, I took out the green one. And, did you? And then I used the yellow one for something else. No, Laura. Yes. I don't have a glass bowl, but I have a metal bowl. Would that work? Absolutely. I'm so sorry. I've just seen that um, and got interrupted by somebody else. And my train of thought, I cannot do two things at once. <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely, you can use a metal bowl, of course. So the only thing I would say with both of those things, if you're using a bowl over a saucepan, make sure that you've got an oven glove because both metal and glass will conduct heat quite fiercely. So don't be lulled into a false sense of security that you can just pick up your glass bowl off the top of the saucepan because it's not directly on the fire. You will find that that gets very, very warm. Um, so just be mindful of that, um, all little people especially as well. So when you come to take it off, make sure that you've got a grown up around or that your grown up is um, marginally more sensible than I am and um, that you do it with an oven glove. Um, I've currently got burns all over my fingers from where I tried to take something out of the oven the other day without using an oven glove. Not so, not so clever. Ow. What did you do? It pricked you? Oh dear. Right, should we get it on and get that melting away? It's a bit heavy, isn't it? There we go. Yeah, so my water already has got lovely little bubbles in it. Um, and it will heat up um, probably quicker than you think it will. Um, so just let it Gently do it thing. You can leave it a couple of minutes and then and then give it a nice stir. And then while that's happening, we're going to whisk our cream and our condensed milk together. So Doc, do you want to have a go at opening the condensed milk with a pan opener? You haven't really done that before, have you? Do you want to give it a go while I go and get your milk for your not your milk, your cream for you? I've never done this before. It's a bit tricky. The key, and um, everybody will have different can openers. The key is to make sure that you puncture it first. So you have to, there you go, no, you did absolutely right. I didn't even, I didn't even touch you. And then you're going to twist it towards you. Uh, or maybe, whatever works. It's falling out the can. Yes, ours is oozing already out of the top of the can. I don't know if anyone else is having that problem. It's not really a problem. Just don't be tempted to drag your finger across the top where the sharp edge is. No, don't. Don't do that. <laughs> That's never going to end well. How are you getting on? Nearly at the end? I didn't do the whole thing. Well, that's okay. So, do you want to take a, a little spoon? Oh, well done. Very carefully there, yeah, because that edge is razor sharp now. This is yummy. You've just told everybody not to do that, and you're doing it straight away, monkey. The classic teacher do as I say, don't do as I do. You'll go far. <laughs> right. It's actually a bit nutty. It's a little bit nutty. Yes, that is a good that is a good description actually. You will pour your condensed milk in. If so, you're going to need, um, as I said in the um, details, you'll need um, to do this either with a stand mixer or a handheld mixer, or with some good strong elbow grease. Um, and so if you're doing it in a stand mixer, at this stage you can put your ingredients, your condensed milk and your cream, into the bowl of your stand mixer, if that's easy. Okay, got them in? Yep, not all of it. I need all of it, that's fair. You don't, you don't need all of it. So fundamentally, there are two things that happen when you make ice cream. And what you want to do is maintain a 
a, a consistency of freeze, which is balanced by freeze inhibitors. So a freeze inhibitor, um, there are multiple things that inhibits freezing. So for instance, um, if mummy's got a bottle of tequila or vodka in the freezer, you'll notice it doesn't go completely rock solid. Um, that's because it's got alcohol. Alcohol is a freeze inhibitor. Sugar is a freeze inhibitor. Fat is also a freeze inhibitor, not quite as successful as sugar and alcohol. But so what we need to do with this, what Caro worked out is that if she balanced the fat and the sugars, she would stop it from freezing like a rock hard ice cube. Um, and depending on how cold your freezer is, you will get um, quite a fudgy, chewy uh, consistency at the end. And if it's a little bit firmer than that, it's probably because your um, freezer is quite cold, in which case leave it out for a couple of minutes just to come to room temperature. Not room temperature, but just to warm up a little bit to make it easy to spill out. Now, my chocolate, go and check your chocolate. My chocolate's coming along nicely, but it's still got a little bit of a way to go. Aww. Probably another couple of minutes. How are you doing? Drop the can into the milk. No one saw, did they? No one saw. Didn't make it actually. <clears throat> Julia Child, channel Julia Child. What would she have said? Never mind, darling. Well, probably tastes better. <laughs> All right, next up, what's going in? Do you know, milk. Cream. The milk, the cream. Okay, so we've got condensed milk and the cream is the next thing that's going in. You dump it in one go. Shall I give you a, oh no, she just doesn't need me as usual. I'm stuck this to requirements. Does anyone know what surplus means? It's surplus. Third plus two requirements. It means in addition to. Oh, it just means you don't need it. <laughs> Perfect. All good? Yum, yum. Should I, should I be your kitchen porter and take that out of your way? Yes, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Um, how much cream do we need? Good question. Dot, how much cream do they need? 200 mils. 200 milliliters of cream. Milk next. No, not the milk next. Not the milk. Don't listen to her. Not the milk <laughs> next. <laughs> Just the cream and the condensed milk. And what we're going to do with this now is we're going to whisk it together. So either go and grab a grown up who's strong, who's going to whisk it really loads, or put it in your stand mixer. And you're going to do this for about, if you're using a stand mixer, you'll do it for about 30 seconds to a minute. It won't double in volume, but it is gonna get this lovely, so right now it's quite liquid. Can you see that? It's really quite a liquid consistency. It's going to get this lovely, thick, kind of voluminous consistency. You're whipping air into it. Um, or if you're very, very, very lucky, you might have one of these. Thank you. <laughs> Dot's been having so much fun with her present from everybody. Thank you so much, guys. So, oh, it's to mix it just half as much as you would if you were making um whipped cream so i think you could go a little bit more than that actually number one and then just make sure you're keeping an eye on your chocolate that it doesn't catch and and go crumbly because 
it's quite high cocoa content, um, so the cacao will seize if you introduce too much heat to it. So keep giving it a stir and take it off as soon as it's completely melted. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So again, it hasn't doubled in volume, but it's definitely got a lot thicker. It's almost like the consistency of paint now. Um, and I'm going to, I know it's really boring, but I'm just going to get her to go just another 30 seconds or so on full blast um, and really whip some air into there. You don't want to go, so if you've been doing it the whole time on high speed on your KitchenAid, you should stop now because you might over whip it and then you'll end up with a very grainy mixture. So, go on, off you go, quick glass. Oh, it's so grainy, isn't it? How did you live long? Um, I can't hear reasons it's funny over the kitchen made everyone can but say so you'll get a very sort of softly whipped cream consistency and when the whisk is going you'll be able to see the trails in the cream but as soon as you stop those trails will disappear so when you lift it up it should create little ribbons but they'll almost instantly disappear so don't worry it, you, know, you, you can't really underdo it or overdo it as long as you've been whisking for a good minute or so you should have a good consistency all right, should we zip that out? Yeah. There we go. Right. Now comes the fun part. Chocolate, chocolate, the chocolate. chocolate. Has everybody's chocolate now completely melted? Probably. Can you have a thumbs up in the chat? Yeah, all brilliant. Like it? Real thumbs up. Nice. So if anybody's chocolate hasn't quite melted yet, don't panic. Um, this really is so super simple. Um, and you can, you can catch up. Um, I'm just going to check a participant. There was somebody who was trying to get in, who was having a struggle getting in, but I don't think they made it. Never mind. Um, we'll be able to share the video with her, sweetheart. Okay. Um, I've also just spotted a message. There's someone in Boston. <laughs> so cool. So if we poured melted chocolate into cold cream, it would probably be a kind of delicious mess, um, but it would get very, very grainy and um, it's not really the look we're going for. So what we're going to do is gently cool that chocolate down. And to do that, we're going to very slowly mix half of our 150 mils of full fat milk into our chocolate. 
And you don't have to measure it exactly because I think you can just look at it between. It doesn't have to be exact, exactly. So exact, exactly, right? Get it? So, and you're going to do this very slowly and very carefully. So you're going to add in a slow stream your milk to your melted chocolate, stirring all the time. All right, get stirring, girl. I'm just putting in a small amount, so because otherwise it gets quite sloppy and you have all the milk flying around everywhere. We don't want that. Nobody likes sloppy chocolate everywhere. Keep stirring, keep stirring. Because if you introduce it too quickly, it might it might sort of get a cur kind of curdled effect. So I put I reckon about a quarter of my milk in so far, and I'm going to let my chocolate come back together and it's getting sort of solid again. And I'm going to add just a little bit more. Yeah. If it's starting to really seize and get stiff, stop. Put the rest of your milk into your cream mixture, and then we'll just add the chocolate into there. So, should we, should we show them? So, ours has started to get quite thick already. Yeah? So, like, uh, chocolate sorbet. Oh, it, well, basically what you've created at this point is chocolate ganache. So what we're going to do now is, oh, I think I took the whiskey, the attachment off, didn't I? Yeah. It needs to go back on. Um, you're going to pop your chocolate into your mixture and we're going to whisk it up. All right. What do we do with the other half of the milk? That's going to go in in a moment, once we've got most of our chocolate in. Okay. Oh. Don't turn it on until it's in. <laughs> Power. Not turn the heat on. Did you put all the chocolate in at the same time? I put most of it, but you can you can keep adding it. So don't worry, it doesn't have to all go in at the same time. But get up. Right. And then you'll start seeing that chocolate mix through the cream mix. If, my, if our chocolate isn't really stiff, do we add more water and more milk until it gets stiffer? Oh, that's a question. Sorry, sorry, if our chocolate isn't very um, thick yet, should we put more? Milk in until it does? No, it's completely fine. So, so pop that in and you'll get, I've just put the in front of you so you can't see. It, nothing bad's going to happen. It's all going to mix in either way. So you might find that it'll start to seize a little bit as you mix it into the ice, into the uh, cream and condensed milk mixture, but it's all going to be fine. It's all going to get mixed up regardless of what you do. Our cream and condensed milk mixture, it's, it didn't work. It's still pretty liquid. It's still pretty liquid. So you might want to, let's have a look. Yeah, you're gonna to want to just whip it just a little bit longer. So if you've got that in a KitchenAid, you can get the um, whisk attachment and just do that for maybe another full minute on full blast. Sound good? Is that Annie? Hi, Angel. Yeah, you just give it another good blast. Keep an eye on it. Okay. All right, let's get the rest of this in. Do you want to keep going? Oh, that's so good. Don't, don't lift it up before it's off. Have you added the rest of the milk? Not yet. No. Okay, thank you. I'm going to add the rest of my milk probably at, at the end. Um, there's no, there's no bad time to do any of this stuff really. All you want to make sure is that you've whipped in a fair amount of air into your condensed milk and your cream in the first place, so that you don't end up with a sort of solid rock um, of of ice cream at the end. Okay, so I'm just going to that last little bit in there. Right, off you go.
Right, now let's show everybody the consistency of what we have here. So I'm hoping that because we've got a glass bowl, everyone can see. So our consistency is what I would call dropping consistency if I was making a meringue. So again, it's gone back to a kind of really thick, um, soft set whipped cream consistency. So if you can see as I'm doing that, it's leaving dollops on the surface. Try and do it at the very bottom because they can only see. Oh, you think? Yeah, they can only see. Is that better? So, and it's it's not staying, it's not like a stiff meringue where it's staying on the end of my whisk. It's definitely falling off. But it's got that lovely sort of thick paint consistency. Yeah, is what you're after. Yeah. And what we're going to do now is if you wanted to have a really thick ice cream that's very chewy and fudgy, you could omit this next bit of milk. So if you want it to be a little bit more gelato-esque, you can omit this next bit of milk. Um, I quite like it a little bit firmer, especially if you're going to introduce some fun stuff to it. Um, but it's totally up to you, okay? So we're gonna add, uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of it. And so it will, it will loosen up quite a bit. There we go. Okay, so in fact, it hasn't loosened up that much. And also the consistency that you have, don't panic too much because the consistency that everybody will have will be dependent on lots of factors. For instance, how cold your cream and your condensed milk was. So like maybe if you're in Dubai and you've got the air conditioning on, your condensed milk might be quite cold um, and your cream might have come straight from the fridge, um, whereas ours wasn't. So maybe ours is slightly more liquidy. So the key point is like, don't panic, nothing bad's gonna happen. Um, yes, I can see a couple of people making sure that they don't have too much washing up to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, yes, Chef says, lick the whisk, very important. <laughs> ah. <laughs> And that is your mix. So the other thing that you should do, especially if you've got a glass bowl, is really useful, is just make sure that you haven't got any chocolate stuck to the bottom or clumps of solid chocolate anywhere. You want a nice, smooth um, consistency. Oh, I nearly pulled it straight out the front of the bowl. That wouldn't be good. But it's a nice, sort of pourable, thick, amalgus, combined consistency. So what do we do with the rest of the milk? Um, you can put it in a cup of coffee. <laughs> Um, okay. or, have it, or have it with, um, with ice and, and a cookie. But I mean, there is absolutely no reason to, to not, as I've left probably three, tea, three tablespoons or something in the bottom of here. Um, it, it just makes it a slightly more solid consistency. So it totally depends on how you like it. So usually I would use all of it. The, I will show you, in fact, Dot, will you go and get from the fridge the ice cream that we made the other day? Uh -huh. And we're going to show them the exact consistency of what it is when you use all of the milk. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to wipe my hands very briefly. So there's three there, Dot, aren't there? Yeah. Will you bring them all? Can you manage? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's very dangerous. <laughs> oh, gosh. You got it? Well done. Don't drop the glass one. Okay, fantastic. So, you're going to need three little tubs. You don't have to. You can put it all in one tub if you like. But if you want to play with some different flavorings, then you're going to need two or three tubs. Um, so if you've got two kids, maybe split it into two. If you've got three kids, maybe split it into three and then they can each have a go at adding their own customized version. So hang on, hang on, hang on. 
the first thing that we're going to do is show you the consistency of what the ice cream is like when you add all of the milk. So I've just frozen that in a glass jar. That's what it looks like. That is me spooning it out and I'm going to flip it over so you can see. All right? Pretty good, right? So if you want it to be slightly fudgier, you can leave out the rest of the milk, but if you want it to be just like that, carry on and put the rest of your milk in. We're gonna go with one that's slightly fudgier just because we're gonna have some fun later with some other um, silly ingredients. So now take your, we're gonna put these aside because we're gonna show them. Yeah, so I'm afraid, really boring, you can't customise your ice cream at this point. No, because what if you customise your ice cream right now, then all the yummy, special, exciting bits will sink all the way to the bottom, and when you eat your ice cream, it will all be at the bottom. And listen, maybe that's a thing. Maybe, maybe there are some people out there who would really like to dig through all of the ice cream and find treasure at the bottom. That could be fun. But if you're a fan of something like fish food, um, which is a secret favourite of mine, and you want them evenly distributed through your ice cream, you're going to need to stir your extra ingredients in at a slightly later stage. So once you've separated your ice cream into your tubs and got it in the freezer. It's gonna sit there for a good two or three hours. So what I'm hoping is that before you go to bed tonight, you can do this. Um, and the consistency you want to do that is gonna be a little bit more like this. That's the one that we hacked into. Yeah, we hacked into this one. But so what you want is a consistency that is pretty, pretty, pretty thick so that it's gonna hold all of the lovely things that you want to add to it. To be honest, but I actually so, think that's a bit too. Yes, it is almost, because well, because we've had it out for sort of 10 minutes really, haven't we? Because that was sat in the fridge waiting, but this one's a good, this one's a great consistency. We'll show them that in a moment. So the first thing we want to do is pour our ice cream into our ice cream tubs to get them in the freezer. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Do you want to come over here? I mean, that <laughs> in your head is delightful. But, okay, perfect. Someone's sitting high. All right. How are you doing? Maybe you want a grown up to help you with that? No, I think you're doing great on your own. Ideally, whatever tub you choose though, you want to make sure that you've got a decent gap in it so that it can take all of your additional extra fun and games. You're doing a great job. Let me get the There's still spoon. A bit enough. There's still a little bit extra. I think that's okay. Let's let's distribute it evenly amongst the other two. We'll just get that last bit into the other two as well. So yeah, this recipe fills three roughly 250 ml to so one pint. These are one pint tubs. Perfect. Just enough left behind to lick the spoon later. Fabulous. They didn't hear that, did they? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now comes the boring part, the fun part for us. <laughs> so let's get the lids on these. And then I hope that everybody got my message saying um, to make sure that you've got room in your freezer for these. Um, do you want to pop these up over on the side? Get them out of the way. Please. Yeah. You want to take, if you take one and I'll pop the other two, we'll put them in the freezer. Okay. Bye. <laughs> and they will take, they'll take a good two or three hours to solidify enough for you to introduce some fun ingredients um, in a way that it will hold. You can just pop it on the side down, that's fine.
I've got a, I've got a spot. Thank you. You're so welcome. Do you want to watch and see what else we add? Oh, oh, my so favorite. We got. We give you some ideas, but when it comes out of the freezer, it looks so yummy. Oh wow! Bananas. You could do. We couldn't find any Smarties here. You put them inside. We have covered something called Smarty Buttons. Didn't even know that was a thing. We so, use crunchy bars. Will they melt in the ice cream? So crunchy bars, if you've got hokey pokey or um, honeycomb that is encased in chocolate, you might get away with it. Otherwise, it probably will disintegrate. However, that's not necessarily a terrible thing. So you'll end up with these lovely pockets um, of, of caramel, salty caramel that um, weave their way through the mixture, which could be really fun. And it could um, look really cool. But I would suggest that you do honeycomb kind of crumbled on the top. Um, then you could do a really grown up version with um, amarena cherries I'm a particular fan of. So do you want to get the whipped cream dot? And we'll show them a little sundae. These, we discovered crunchy rocks. So because they're encased in chocolate, they might survive. Um, we could give those a go. Then Rocky Road. Mini pink and white marshmallows, so much fun. Whipped uh, cream. Dot's made some whipped cream. So when you've got your, your mixture, ours is a little bit sloppy now, you literally, all you need to do is stir in your fun ingredients. Oh yeah, this one's perfect. So this is the sort of consistency that you want to have it up so that you can stir your ingredients in and so that it will then hold um, in the places that you stir them into. So Dot, do you want to stir in your marshmallows and things? I'm just filling Sammy's water Ah, uh, she's filling Sammy's water dogs. He's parched. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay. So what do you want to stir into yours? Marshmallows. Marshmallows. I'm going to do a very naughty grown up Sunday. I'm going to do chocolate ice cream with a little bit of your whipped cream. So here's another really nice grown up version as well. So if anyone's been to Italy, particularly Venice, they do a wonderful ice cream called um, Doge's Gelato, which is candied orange peel. And they usually only do it with uh, Seville oranges, so you can only get it at a certain time of the year. But if you've got some fancy marmalade, um, or if you know anyone who makes marmalade, it's a really good cheats version. Um, so that could be really nice, swirling some good old-fashioned dark marmalade through the ice cream. Um, I'm going to do amarena cherries, whipped cream. Has anybody got good ideas? Do you think salted peanuts would work? Oh my God, would be amazing. Do you know, I even thought earlier, I must remember to tell people peanut butter. How about pretzels? Pretzels would be amazing. We, we have melty bars, but would it be better to do like desiccated coconut? <gasps> no. Bounty bars, chunks of bounty bars, amazing. <laughs> so really I'm, I'm we've got the world's best marmalade made by you, in fact. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> little, little bit of product placement. So years ago, I made this. I thought I was the cleverest girl in the world. I, I invented, um, along with Caro, um, Toblerone ice cream. So I managed to buy some nougat that I chopped up into chunks and toasted whole almonds and stirred them through it. It was absolutely knockout. So if you're a Toblerone fan, I can highly recommend that. But I'm going to do um, these outrageous amarillo cherries, which always remind me of Seattle. So I'll go up there who used to make cocktails with these all the time. Can you use the sauce and you mix it through? You can. It comes with a delicious. Okay, keep breaking up the whole 
um, juice that's all around it. And then just because I'm here, um, I think I might have a little bit of thing drizzled over the top of it too. Um, it's also particularly good with coffee liqueur. If you're that sort of person, you could drizzle a little um, Kahlua maybe. Um, this is also really fun as an affogato. So if, if you've got any grown-ups around, this is a fantastic one. When we come out of lockdown, we're all allowed to have friends for dinner as what I refer to as emergency dessert. If you've got a pot of this in the fridge, you can whip up an emergency dessert for guests that you weren't expecting. But put a nice ball of the ice cream into uh, a pretty glass um, or an espresso cup and then pour over a shot of espresso and serve it just like that. It's phenomenal. Um, so yeah, there you go. Oh my God, so naughty. Is it drink o'clock time yet? What do you think? <laughs> so guys, please show us all your inventions. I want to hear about everybody's crazy one. I love the idea of pretzels, salted pretzels through the ice cream and, and peanuts. That sounds amazing. Um, so there's my, there's my really boozy, naughty Black Forest Gatto, really. <laughs> um, we do something in our family. Um, which we've done for years, which is called back to front supper. When people have been really well behaved, we have dessert first. <laughs> um, or sometimes that. back to front, front, back to back. Supper. Back to front, front, back to back, what? That sounds even more exciting. Yes, there you go, my gift to you. <laughs> well, it was really lovely to see everybody as always. Um, we do these classes for free so that um, we're raising a little bit of awareness for Cook19 and the Felix Project, which are two things that are very dear to our hearts. Please go ahead and look up at the things that they do and make a donation if you've enjoyed today. Um, we'd love to see you again. And please, please, please send us pictures of what you do. We love to see all the fun things that you make. Um, and you can get a grown up to send that to us um, at the Instagram feed or email me or however you like. Um, take care, everybody. What have you got, Dot? Are you done? Marshmallow and amarillo cherry sauce. Marshmallow and amarillo cherry. <laughs> A winning combination. <laughs> bye bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in from all over. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. Bye. bye.